Welcome to Hoss Brutality. My name is Stefan Zarnecki of Black Tide Tours. With me, as always, Wesley Jones of Tour Cascadia and local artist Cole Rogers. And we are joined today by a distinguished political leader, a farmer, a surfer, and proud son of Lincoln City, Oregon, Commissioner Casey Cola. Thank you for coming on. Oh, welcome, yeah. Welcome. I know. That was quite the welcome. Thank you for the County Commissioner. Yes, that's right. Surfer. Yamhill County Commissioner, even though Lincoln City native. True. Okay. Right. Oh, man. Is there... Are there some rough feelings there back home? Oh, I'm sure. I'm yeah, sure there are. Like, Actually, they're probably out. grateful that I'm not there getting Yeah, that might be. That <laughs> I'll might be. say that. that could be. Lincoln City, though, they... Anyway, it's a wonderful town. Um, yeah. Couple... And I only have two surfboards. How many surfboards do you own these days? Oh. Or can you count I don't that know. high? Seven or eight, but only two of them are, like, seaworthy. Got so it. I've got some decorative surfboards. I mean, really, mine aren't seaworthy. But... but when's the last time they've been in the sea? Tell me. Probably last summer. No, That's, last summer I just took care of my dad. That was like the only thing I did at the beach. Last summer was COVID summer. Ugh. Doesn't count. No, it really doesn't. Okay, so a summer ago, but. Okay. So yeah. last summer. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That's better than me. Yeah, no, I. It's important it's been a to while get for me, wet. Two couple years. I'll just say that. Good for you. Good for yeah, you. My right? goal this, this summer is to get out with my oldest who keeps saying we need to go surfing. We need to go surfing. Sweet. We just got to just gotta go. Yeah, just gotta get, just gotta get wet. Gotta get. You gotta get wet. You have, are your kids? They've got wetsuits and everything. They're oh, yeah, going. yeah. They're super. They're. Um, I'd say that they uh, they have the cautious gene that apparently I didn't get. Um, so they There's are gonna survive teenage years. That's good. Yeah, <laughs> but they're like super awesome swimmers, so they love it. That's awesome. good. Yeah. Then they're, see, that's the thing is like if they're the start. too cautious, then they'll just be like, nope, I don't need to surf. I'll be on the beach and mm -hmm. not try. And then the farthest heart is broken. Right. That's, how old, yeah. how old that's were they when important. they started surfing for the first time? Oh my gosh. Um, maybe four and five that age. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's where you just like, you go out together and you hold the board and let them ride it in. Kind Push of them into the waves. So I have a couple yeah. of years to get over my paralyzing fear of the ocean before yeah. Malcolm gets on a board. <laughs> Totally. Surf trip. Oh. The Wesley. thing that was awesome is just keeping them in their life jackets. You know, they got a wetsuit on, and then you put a life jacket on them, and you're like, all right, you're, you're Ooh, good. They're just a cork at that yeah. point. Yeah, totally. They just yeah. kind of... <laughs> <laughs> and you just have to teach them to keep their mouth shut when they're crying. Oh. <laughs> it's water tastes so bad. Because <laughs> right. oh. they're like, ah! Getting a yeah. mouthful of ocean water just like shoved Nose down full. your throat is the, one of the worst feelings in the entire world. Just... I want to be one of the jet ski chase guys. Oh. <laughs> Stefan like took right. me to the coast. And anyway. There we go. We got to move on from surfing. I could talk. Yeah, that's, that's great. I'm, I'm a good talker when it comes to surfing. <laughs> it's the actual surfing part. Though. I'll say that I used to be a very skilled surfer, and now I'm just aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. People love that. Good combination. How long is that leash? How long is that board? That's 12 feet of death. Or right, exactly. 18 feet. You know, I'm always the 9 0, though. So oh, I've baby. always just ridden the 9 0, no matter what. Right, we need to talk surfing more later. All right, so okay. Casey, we go back a little bit, you and I. Yeah. Because you're a farmer. And mm -hmm. I think my wife heard about your farm mm -hmm. and what you were doing over there through the grapevine, through Yamhill County, maybe Jody. Probably Jody. Probably Jody. And um, Jody Hansen. Thank you, Jody. And you have... Although, actually, uh, your parents were in the CSA long before. Cole's yeah, parents? Yeah. Oh, before mm -hmm. us? Yeah. Damn. <laughs> Trendsetters. Well, Maureen, she had a cow. She was like... OG farmer. Yeah, Maureen was in it like right. way before any OG else. farmer. Yeah. I think even before Jody. So yeah, your farm is a magical place on mm -hmm. Grand Island. It is magical. With uh, surfboards, but children and animals mm -hmm. and fruit and vegetables and mm -hmm. trees and it, it's such a wonderful place. And, and you and two, right? Yeah. So, yeah. You didn't not know? No. Oh, oh, yeah. About the cannabis side of things? No. Oh, yeah, this is a whole I was new like, thing. Uh, I mean, I was a licensee OG, right? So I was like oh. the 14th licensee in the state. Wow. I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh. So where, now where does one get the product? Just from the farm? Where does one get? Like the, the, uh, the weed? Yeah. The cannabis? Yeah. Uh, well, you can buy it in a store. You're... But, but you don't sell direct or anything. No, no, you can't. Yeah. Got it. Yeah, yeah. That, I didn't think so. But Not with the fun stuff. With the the CBD stuff, like hemp, you can you could sell it. Direct. Gotcha, gotcha. So do you do farm tours? Um, because I know people who live in like Texas and stuff be like, I want to see a marijuana plant. You know. They, right. 
We have we've done a lot of the like stand at the gate. Okay. <laughs> Wave so over there. And everyone, you know, like you have to like take down everybody's names. You have to look at their oh, ID. Yeah. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. you have to be like, hey, by the way, that camera is looking at you right now. Um, and so we have done some of those. Like we hosted 250 people for the uh, eclipse, and there were some oh. folks with like very long dreadlocks from LA who were like, hey, can I, can I see your plants? And I was like, well, you, they're right here. And they were like, no. Those plants. The, <laughs> Which the, is, it was like September, I think, right? So it was perfect. Yeah. The plants were like 15 feet tall. Wow. So you just like walk down the alleys of them. It was wow. fun. Wow, damn. Yeah. You know, how, how many plants do you have? Um, well, so past tense, uh, we actually just f uh, finalized selling our license like three days ago. Okay. Mm. So I'm no longer a cannabis grower. But I always will be a cannabis grower in the eyes of some people. So. <laughs> it's this exclusive or club you can't leave. <laughs> We have to make sure the introduction is proper. Right, exactly. I remember when you used to do the full diet CSA, mm -hmm. that was wild. Going out there. Because <laughs> you were doing the eggs and the milk and the butchering and there's kids and there's like every and you're and we pull up to the open barn and you're there just like like shopping up a pig or something. Yeah. That was legit. Many. Yeah. It was super cool. I know. I was trying to figure out. Uh, oh, so to answer your question, the last few years we've been growing 60 plants. Okay. And it was just because uh, the cologne producer we bought from, who was stellar, very, very clean uh, plants, uh, they only sell in uh, minimum lots of 20. And we wanted to get three strains each time. And we always got the three, same three strains. So it meant that uh, the plants are tighter together in a high tunnel than we want to have them. Um, but we just print them a lot and they get, you know, 14 feet tall. Mm. Goodness gracious. Yeah. Climb them like Jack. Um, yes. Okay. So that's a whole part of your life. And of course, <laughs> farming was, was and is everything. Uh, but you decided to run for count, Yamhill County Commissioner. Yeah. Why? I mean, uh, in my more flippant moments, I say Trump. Ah, okay. I was uh, a response. Okay. Yeah. And I mean, this is a, a more flippant. <laughs> uh, type environment so uh, but the like a more serious version of that is <laughs> okay. um, that we spent a lot of time as younger farmers um, opposing a, uh, a land use application for a gravel quarry down the street from our farm mm -hmm. um, and that got us into intimate contact or like close contact regularly watching the county commissioners mm -hmm. um, and I really wanted to have I really wanted to have commissioners that I felt like we're making each decision in the best interest of the community and who are really considering all sides in it. And that was like the, the thing where it's like, I, I just feel like every decision that's made is being made because of a preconceived notion of the world, like a, a partisan Rip, lens, yeah. I guess. And I just wanted, I wanted that to see um, commissioners that I really could trust. That yeah. I felt like, yeah, they're giving it their all. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I remember during your campaign, one of the things that stood out to me was uh, evidence-based decisions. It was, yeah. it was some phrase like that you kept using, and I was like, oh, God, please. Or fact-based or science-based decisions. Yeah, you know? yeah. Like, yeah, I mean, I, like, like I just ran as a farmer. Uh, I was like, we need a farmer, um, a scientist, and a rural resident on the Board of Commissioners. Mm -hmm. Like, that's what we're, we're missing, and we really need that. Right. Well, because that's what makes up the majority of our community. Right. So to be truly represented... Yeah, someone that does the work you do. Right, and I mean, um, you know, it's it. Uh, less to your point, though, that uh, most people in Yamhill County live in cities, but um, the they are already represented. Right, they've got their city councilors, yep. they've got their mayors, mm. um, but for a lot of other people, they um, the the county commissioners are really the ones who are doing the work on their mm. behalf. Mm. Mm. And what work is that? Like, so yeah, it was like good segue on this one. Yeah, I don't know. Like, what what account? I mean, I, I'm learning what a county commissioner does, sure. but for those who know even less than me what <laughs> yeah i mean the super like fundamental core of it is that we approve the budget and we approve contracts mm -hmm. and then we make all the land use the the final say land use decisions in the county okay and so for example everything else is just what people might want to do okay so a land use um application or whatever so for example would be something like uh, the uh, whether or not to ex uh, site where to site a regional landfill, okay. and then whether to expand it or not onto farmland. Okay. So a decision. Uh, wolves and people. You're probably very familiar with wolves <laughs> yeah, and people. Yeah. So wolves and people was a, a commercial activity in conjunction with farm use application. Um, those always come to the board of commissioners. 
Um, I didn't make that decision, that particular one. I did have the, the, the good luck, I guess, of um, voting to not expand, not allow expansion of the landfill. That was very exciting. Yeah, that, that was last year sometime? It was last year. Yeah, that was a I good one. I think. <laughs> Maybe before. I don't know. Yeah. Blur's Day 2020. <laughs> who knows? <laughs> What? Oh yeah. Okay. So there's really like the commissioners are the face, the public face of the county. So like I was chair last year, mm-hmm. um, and so with the the advent of the onset of COVID, um, I was in weekly meetings with the governor or one of her staff members. Um, I was the one who signed um, and approved um, us moving from, you know, um, the closure, right, the stay at home order into phase one and then into phase two. Um, so as chair, you really are the public face to other agencies and jurisdictions. Um, yeah. I, and I and then love commissioners that. meddle in lots of things. I too. thought you did a wonderful job communicating. I, mm, I'm yeah. not one yeah, to yep. say behind the scenes of like yeah. all that. I don't know anything about it. But I know as a Yamhill County resident and a follower of you on Facebook, mm-hmm. you, had, you posted some long posts <laughs> that were just giving us the nitty gritty of what's going on and i thought you were doing a really did a really nice job of keeping it facts you keep it to the facts and not yeah saying, thanks oh this person was really irritating or whatever right. i know some of you think that i don't know like it was it, it was great i really appreciated that i'm sure i'm not yep. the first sweet. person yeah to say i that, echo so. that sweet thanks Wesley. yeah yeah so uh you mentioned the landfill um not expanding that's a right. that's a pass that's kind of water under the bridge that's gone what are some other projects that you've kind of had your hands in that were uh, successes or maybe things that you look back on and going, man, I wish I wish we could have won that one or, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, the one of the things that's coming back to, you know, to bite uh, county residents now is that um, over the last 15 years, uh, Gamble County has been moving forward with this uh, trail project, <laughs> purchasing a, a, an old rail corridor from near the city of McBinville to Gaston in Washington County. Um, and all along, there's been support from the commissioners, from the community. Um, and then uh, in May of last year, um, you know, somebody was elected, one of my now colleagues, who uh, pledged to end the trail project. Um, and that's been, uh, that's been very challenging to see that project either be killed, axed, put on ice, mothballed, whatever the term is. Um, but it's been uh, much harder to see the community's uh, disappointment over it. Yeah. So there's, I mean, that's, we, you asked me about successes, but I, that's I leave the, That's the very failure, recent, right? right? That's only within the last I mean, we talked m- about it today. Two months or so, month and a half. Yeah. 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 I introduced the proposal today that um, Shehalem Parks and Rec um, is interested in either long-term lease or purchasing the property. So. Mm. Uh, so, so we're, the, we're the still land, talking about it. The land that the county has purchased, mm-hmm. potentially Parks and Rec. Right. right. I mean, they're interested in it. Right. Gotcha. But now, about, if the sense. project, as I understand it, the project doesn't move forward, the county is responsible to pay back a certain amount of money that was given in grants right. to see the project completed? Basically all of it. Um, mm-hmm. You know, all the money, the purchase price, um, uh, to build a bridge, kind of all of that is up. Hmm. And one of the things that's been interesting is that, uh, you know, regularly there's a there's rhetoric about like grants are um, grants from the state or from the feds uh, or from the county to other organizations is taxpayer dollars. And it's like taxes. Mm. And, you know, why are you using our taxes for this? I just realized the other day it's really interesting because um, the bridge ca- uh, contract and this uh, building this bridge on the trail and designing it, getting it all so we can actually use this corridor is actually paid for with lottery dollars. <laughs> oh, well, there you go. <laughs> and I was like... <laughs> go buy some tickets and Yeah, exactly. The Everybody go buy lottery tickets. Yeah. Um, can go right now. I mean, there's some really specific things um, that I'm super proud of, but really, like, our kids are so delighted by. And one of them is that we opened, uh, we were approached, the commissioners were approached by um, folks in this neighborhood in West McMinnville, uh, where this county road goes up and over a mountain. Uh, and um, the people were like, you know, the, there's a gate that Weyerhaeuser controls, but the, proper, the, the road is a county road. Um, will you consider opening it? And we, so we had this big series of hearings. 
in the end, we opened the gates. <laughs> And I stood there to make sure they opened it just in case, right? Because uh, Warehouser had the key. Uh, and they were fine. They were initially very mad at the idea that we would open this gate. Um, mm. But when we explained that we were going to maintain the road, the county was, they were fine with it. Okay. But right. now that's, ex that's allowed access to um, a lot of public land and a lot of land um, that's managed by Hancock, uh, which is a timber company that's totally fine with people being on their land. It also goes through yeah. warehouser land. So, but we have to worry about scroungers who want to drive up there in their cars and camp, though. Now, right? You know, playing devil's advocate. We we go there all the time. <laughs> so I've never camp. seen anybody. I, camp. <laughs> I literally have never met anybody out there that I don't know. Yeah. Like, that's the thing that's so funny about it. Yeah. To be like, oh, hey, how's it going? like lots of mushroom people. Now we're talking. That. Now we're talking. Yeah, it was the first place that we ever found chanterelles. Yeah. Oh man, it's beautiful. Because you know we live beautiful. on the river island, so we have um, uh, Bear's Head. Um, so it's like, like frozen waterfalls, beautiful white things, and uh, they grow on old conifer logs. And then we have oyster mushrooms, and that's it. Oh no, so no that's like, not true. Well, okay, that's. You've got verpas back there. Yes, that's so, true. But anyway. Yeah. I'm not going to say where. Um, well, we have them on the farm. Oh, that's good. Yeah. That's yeah. good. Yeah, I've actually. Jesse was the one who found them. On the ice, on, at our place, the Ripas, yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. Well, it is morel season. I, I want to get out there. I want to. I want to go check out some of the burns and and, and whatnot because yeah. Ian's getting really excited off. I'm camera. seeing a lot of pictures, but <laughs> oh, the, prob yeah. the problem is, I, I don't go for morels, and I always talk about it every year. I'm going to go for morels, going to hit the burns, and then I get busy with touring. And yeah. I'm like at home and my computer. It's like how, I can't be gone for totally ten hours, and you know, but. Well, you know, to uh, but we, we, were, we were talking about successes, right? Um, and that's like one that's just really, really positive for people. Just that you can, you now can access land um, yeah. that was closed off to the public. Uh, and, you know, we're now talking, uh, Bureau of Land Management and are in conversations about what that looks like to expand outdoor recreation access in the area. Like actually have people taking care of trails, building trails more, hmm. um, which I think. That's huge. Um, it, like we'll, we'll get to tourism a bit in a little bit, but that's going to be a big thing is like gravel riding. Uh, trail riding, trail running, absolutely mushroom foraging. This, this area, like our coast range is amazing. It's amazing. This yeah. this area for for as beautiful an area as it is, and what we have around, mm -hmm. we really don't have much in the way of trails. Right. Like when people come mm -hmm. and they're like, "Hey, I want to go on a hike." Mm -hmm. I'm like. Oh God! What the Harvey <laughs> Creek Trail? <laughs> they go out to Hag Lake. Like, do you want to come forge? down to the island? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's weak. There's not a lot. Like, yeah, I mean, the Abbey is my go-to. Abbey's mm -hmm. go, you know, but yeah. but really, for as beautiful and wooded and everything as it is here, there, we don't have. And yeah, the Abbey's a not lot. a good hike. I mean, the Abbey's pretty, but it's not like. It's, it's not a death march like you and your dad good, like to it's do. It's not a good Yeah, hike. no, okay. I'm I'm with you. Yeah, I like to feel like I'm gonna die. Like the kids like to go to the top and. Um, there is something special about the ridge. Like I love walking a ridge, mm -hmm. even if it's forested on both sides. Yeah. Um, but um, the uh, there is a lot of potential for trails. I mean, mm -hmm. that's like the, that's the reality of it. Hmm. So I'm in a conversation with um, uh, the there's like an outfitters organization, an outfitters association, and ODFNW, so Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife, and uh, a couple of mountain biking groups. Uh, and Weyerhaeuser and the Hunters Association about what it looks like to um, give an incentive to landowners in exchange for recreational easement access. So you can just, mm. is, so in theory, like the equivalent of a farm to fer, farm deferral or forestry deferral, where sure. people are actually getting a financial incentive to allow people in a certain area or to cross their land. Mm -hmm. Is liability the biggest barrier to that? So that is one of them. And then also just like, what's in it for me kind of thing, right? Is like, do I want to have people mm. dropping garbage on my land? Mm. You have sure. to have yeah, well, something. We had the, the, the launch, the paddle launch ruined for that Right, reason, so. right, exactly. So one of the benefits of a program like that, if we can set it up here, they want to set it up here first and then take it statewide. But is, you know, we've got the Yam Hill, the North Fork of the Yam Hill and the South Fork of the Yam Hill. And then we've got the Willamette. So much land Maybe access to the unused. river with no access. Yeah, yep. Mm -hmm. And then we have the forest, right? Where there's gates closing off public lands because in between the public land and farmers' lands or like rural residential is a little bit of private timberland. 
So for the private yeah. timberland owners, if they have a slight financial incentive that causes them to, like it covers their costs of picking up garbage, right? Or like pulling out um, like a stuck truck. Mm -hmm. um, just that like little bit of an incentive may be enough to allow um, them to get people out to the public lands. You know, we've got the Trask, we've got the Nestucca, sure. some amazing public lands that we can access from here. Yeah. yeah. And the river and the Willamette. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Other Absolutely. things that stand so out. So that'll as be far like as, you know, a real, real big one. Yeah, those are big, big plans. Yeah. Anything else on your desk that you want to mention that's you're stoked about? Yeah, I mean that's the, that's probably those the, the one I'm most stoked about. Yeah. Um, wildlife, uh, sorry, uh, wildfire preparation is another mm. one that we're working on right now. Um, you know, with a with a new board composition, I have to make sure that it's something that I'll get approval, I'll get one more vote for. Right. Uh, but emergency preparedness and like getting ready for wildfires is... Ra raking the forest? Yes, <laughs> raking the forest. Well, raking the forest and then finding the, the chanterelle, or not the chanterelles, <laughs> the... Um, truffles? Or? The truffles, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, why else would you rake the forest? You gotta rake right? those forests. You gotta, yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right, yeah. so you've lived in Yamhill County a while now, What and you, um, what, are, mm -hmm. what are some of your favorite spots? So. The coolas want to go out to eat. The coolas want to spend a day. What are, what are some of those? That's, you know, what's so funny, Stefan, is that I immediately thought, well, well, we'll go into the trail of the river and then we, or we'll go to high heaven and, you know, like yeah. we'll be on public land. You meant like go out. And oh, it's yeah. It's been so long yeah. since we've gone out. That's true. Going out to eat. Yeah. Or I don't oh, know. Wild idea. Well, so the, the, you know, true confessions is that when Katie and I want to, like, go, my wife and I want to go out to eat or want to, like, have a special time, we go other places go, uh, so that we can actually talk to each other. Because otherwise you get caught up in conversations with the uh, yes. local residents. Oh, can we sure cool? Yeah, and all of, like, our favorite places to eat, you know, we've sold vegetables, too, over the years, too. So... Then um, so you want some anonymity. It's just kind of nice to go somewhere You're else. You're a rock star. That's it. You're living a rock star life. Right, like the paparazzi. Yeah. I mean, it's not really like You're like that, our own Yamhill County like a, Lady Gaga. Right. Yeah. Uh, there's, you know, they get the glares <laughs> and like, what's up, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, the like whispers. <laughs> And like, they have, they're holding their cameras out. Yeah, there you go. Like, well, why do you have your phone out? Can we do a selfie? Oh, I'm just texting. Can we do a selfie? Yeah, yeah. I'm just texting. Um, but I mean, you know, I, as an elected official, it's challenging to, you know, call out specific restaurants that are really awesome. But in the past, yeah, okay, before pre pre in, in in the in the before times, <laughs> uh, really like the the places that we sold a lot of vegetables to were the places that we would go just because there's that special bond, right? Yeah. Of like, well, we eat your food, you eat our food. What are you doing with our carefully, preciously grown vegetables? Right, right. Yeah. I mean, we definitely felt like we had, <clears throat> um, there was a special time when, um, uh, when Nick's um, was, let's see, it was like um, Eric and Carmen, uh, like they were the main chefs there. Um, you know, Nick had stepped back and handed over daily operations. Um, and we didn't have kids. And so we would go in, we'd do a delivery, and then we would just have dinner for the next seven hours. <laughs> wow. Damn. I oh, like it. That sounds very nice. That sounds I mean, a good way I mean to just spectacular. And they'd be like, hey, um, Let's let's fry some uh, arugula rapini and see what that's like. Or like they're like, can you bring in a bunch of baby like baby baby leeks and we'll see what we can do with them. And so then they would just sit around and cook stuff and they'd feed it to us. See, and, that doesn't wow. sound meaty enough for me. I think a seven-hour meal of just vegetables. My, I might have had some nightmares. Oh, about don't that. worry, don't worry. No, <laughs> yeah, yeah. They have the meats there. At, they at have the meats. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, really, around here, there's so many good producers of food <laughs> that I feel like an average person can take really, really well-grown food and make amazing food out mm -hmm. of it. Oh yep. yeah, agree. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. So I mean, we'll we'll be down at the river, you know, enjoying life and having really good food. I can't wait for River Days again. Yeah. Yes. Warm warmth and uh splashing around good times oh, that, yeah. that was wonderful. we actually went down to the river last weekend and took naps awesome. <laughs> like do you, the, do you the have kids like, are like everywhere do you have like family hammocks like each of everybody has their own hammock or you something? know i love lying on the rocks on the, oh yeah okay. yeah the kids and i went down because we cleared you know because the ice storm just dropped 
crazy amounts of stuff. Oh, yeah. So the kids and I went through and, you know, like I bucked and they hauled stuff off the trail and we got down there and it was like, like a light rain. And it was like, this is like a perfect <laughs> Oregon moment. And so I just like, I, you know, <laughs> took off everything that I couldn't handle having on. I just laid on the rocks <laughs> and I let the raindrops slowly, slowly like the cold rain and i was like this is a so zen. perfect oregon moment. zen moment <laughs> i would prefer the sun but i can honestly say i've never done what casey just described in my entire life <laughs> <laughs> but no i nap dry that's what you're, uh, i'm a dry nap love this like, guy's oregonian like a, to the bone coasty this is a coasty yeah that is uh, that's exactly that what i was gonna say right man. there's yeah. like this moment though where you're like almost not sure if you're alive because you're just feeling those like little it's cold and the little raindrops oh yeah how you're enjoying a little bit maybe too much of your, your own uh own product no I'm just to each their own, uh, each their own. i'll right. come down with the hammock i'm yeah. not a rock sleeper but i'll bring the hammock <laughs> we can perfect. we can nap together. air mattress yeah yeah all right that was what well, lovely thank you well, uh, oh yeah commissioner cool can I ask? No, if you have, yeah, please. What's next? Are is it too early to announce a continued political run? Are we done with politics when this is over? Do you not want to show your cards? <laughs> the enemies are everywhere. No. Right. Well, I probably won't do announcements here. No. <laughs> Oh, come on so, yeah. now. I was trying to get our YouTube views out. <laughs> a special announcement. I was doing my from best. From Commissioner right Kula. Good try, well, though, Wesley. But, uh, you know, Wesley, every day I'm glad to be doing this. Well, we're glad you're here. That. I mean, it's like I am we're truly grateful. honored. Yeah. yeah. And thank you for announcing you're going to be running for office again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, appreciate we appreciate you yeah. dropping the news on our podcast of all places. Uh, yeah. That's big news, Casey. That's first, big news. Folks. We're going to do it we're live. We're so glad. Next. We're going to do it live next time. Yeah. You know how so, good deep fakes are getting. Yeah, we're yeah. just going to we're going to deep fake that. Totally. And with a mask, I can do it even easier. So <laughs> that's such a good point. You Casey's can make announcing his, oh my his yeah. next so run. True. That's how we do all our podcasts. I guess we just deep fake them. Yeah, I had this worry. I was None walking in, I was like, yeah. I'm a little worried. No, it's fine. No. If you say anything we don't agree with, we'll just <laughs> fix it. Yeah. 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 Ten, ten, ten minutes of your video and we're good. Yeah, uh, totally. Okay. All right. Moving on. Don't sound so excited. So, I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm, I'm, still, I'm still full from my trip, which is what we're getting to. Um, so my formal apology for missing a couple episodes. It is 100% my fault because I went to Hawaii and uh, I didn't didn't get any content. Didn't then we didn't record and we don't we don't zoom we don't do zoom anymore. We tried it uh, and it was like eh, it was all right. But mm -hmm. so anyway, we took a couple weeks off. So sorry, my our loyal fan base. Hopefully you, you came back for this episode. But the bonus is you get to hear me talk a little bit just a little bit about Hawaii, specifically the Big Island, because uh, I'm not an expert, but I, what I will tell you are a few of the things that stood out to me that you do need to try. I was there with buddy Tim working on his house. Tim, who Cole told the conch story, same Tim. Took Hawaii, me to Haiti. Uh, Haiti Tim. Yeah. Um, he spent a lot of time in Hawaii, and specifically the Big Island, grew up in Honolulu, and um, I think he lived for like 20 years or something on the Big Island. Anyway, so he was showing us, Cole's dad and myself, my father-in-law, um, some of the not touristy stuff. So a lot of what I got to experience was not like resorty bullshit. It was like what people who live on the Big Island actually do. And I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. And I, I, when I was there, I was dedicated to eating the food of, that I cannot get back home. So... Of those things, uh, first one to stand out that I really, really miss is Spam Musabi, which is essentially like, if you don't know, it's, it's like Spam Sushi. And it's mm -hmm. fucking delicious. And it's salty and is like... Is it raw Spam? No, it's, I think it's cooked. <laughs> but it, well, raw versus <laughs> cooked, I think, is... <laughs> like straight out of the jar. <laughs> it's all the same. <laughs> I feel like you're sweet. Plate... It feels. I feel like it should be a little bit sweet too. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Like a little. Uh, like well, soy. I think it has a little soy sauce and something else. I can yeah. honestly say I've never eaten spam. So one had mm -hmm. one had like um, egg, like a, a maple egg on it, mm -hmm. and it, so it had a little sweetness. And but here's the thing that I think is so cool 
is they sell it like in uh, the gas stations. Like you grab on your way to work a spam musabi and uh, coffee, and that's what you eat on your way to work. It's like it's so different from here, and mm -hmm. it was delicious. And I'm looking up how to make it at home or buy some frozen or something. But mm -hmm. I just loved it. I want I want spam musabi at all, all the gas stations. I want to try it. Yeah, I, it, it's just simple. It's simple and tasty and salty and delicious. Spam musabi. Uh, plate lunch, you know, basically rice and meat. Don't have to go that much into it, but it was very delicious and barbecued, that kind of stuff. Um, Loco Moco just mm. is wonderful. Rice, burger patty or chicken with egg and gravy. Mm. Like, what a delight. Mm. What a delight. Why mm -hmm. do we not have more Loco Moco here? I, I don't know. What's, but. The, what's the name of the Hawaiian place in Corvallis? Right off Oregon State's, is it Local Boys? I think it's local boys. Sure, First place I had Locomoco. Where's Corvallis? I don't know. Yeah, what is that? It's I've been there like twice. The best Hawaiian food you can get outside of Hawaii 503 in McMinnville. All which right, is field my trip. good friends. <laughs> field trip. Yep, we'll go. Um, okay, poke. I had poke many times. Mm -hmm. Best best was going into the grocery store where they had like literally 12 different kinds of mm. poke oh, in the case. Okay. And you can get like a little of each or whatever. Mm -hmm. And we did that. I love poke. It was just a... Oh, a revelation. God, I wish we had that here. Poke is so fucking good. So good. good. Oh, and it's, it's so healthy. Refreshing. It's, it's so healthy. refreshing yeah, for food. Yeah, it's just you know? protein. Oh, it is. It's refreshing. I love you it. Could just, I could eat a bucket of it. Yeah. Right. It's almost like Cole, when we were working at the Allison, would go into the break room and just eat like three cans of dry tuna. Oh, it's a little <laughs> I mean, different. It's almost the same. This is why I appreciate poke so much, because it's like yeah. I'm eating. <laughs> you I have a habit of eating time. tuna fish just out of the can, because oh, it's just. God. I have the, uh, yeah. Well, I we don't were like broke preparing. as hell. You had food mm -hmm. issues. And it was like, we, you were, we were working on the body that you got. Got to get the protein. Yeah. 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 Got to get, get the protein. protein. Gotta get those little Wait, different. so is the oil vibes. packed or the, the, the water packed? Cause it, oh, water. Oh, because I, you know, the like Italian oil packed, man. I don't it's like, like it. It's like a full meal. Oh, oh. dude. I, I got to just do and water. And with your fingers. And then I throw peanut butter in can. It's oh, peanut butter. Oh, with a peanut butter? Sardines. Yes, classic cold. That's Just what's wrong with you. Choking it down. Mm -hmm. uh, we're we're Anyways, working on it. We're this working. is why I appreciate poke because exactly. poke is like, oh, this is good raw fish, you know? Yeah. <laughs> right. It's like my tuna fish cans, but it's like somehow tastes better. Making and, progress. <laughs> we're making progress. It's been more prepared somehow. Okay, yeah. moving on. Uh, Mai Tais. I had many, well. many Mai Tais, mm -hmm. making sure. And Thank one you. dinner, your dad that. may have had two Mai Tais on an empty stomach, and we had a great fucking time. My dad's great when he gets a little buzzed. Dude. I want to get Bill buzzed and get him on the podcast. Bill had a ball. Stories. That was a fun night. Bill's yeah. great. And not that we, other nights weren't fun, but your mm -hmm. your dad just a little giggly. My dad a little buzzed. Oversharing. Every was Thanksgiving, wonderful. you know how it goes. He, it's like... By, he's also a goofball. Like yeah. Your dad does really Marine, is a goofball. Does Marine drink to like a no. fun tipsy level? No. She took one glass is a tipsy level for my mom. Yeah. She's, my mom is just as fun, but she's just more... Oh, ref, she's more... We need to get Marina. Bill, let's lose a little more. Oh, we've geez. been using her space this whole time. She would brutalize me. The that's whole what I want on that, camera. That, I don't yeah, know what no, you're scared no, of. No, she absolutely would. Marine, uh, what's Nick's, your schedule Nick's, look like in the next three Nick's, weeks? Nick's definitely Tuesday uh, or Thursday. Moving on. Okay, uh, coffee. We spent a lot of time. That's going to get out on Facebook. Marine's yeah. coming on the podcast. <laughs> she doesn't watch the podcast. Um, she doesn't. Care. It doesn't matter. <laughs> the, the, the coffee there over. was amazing. We spent at least two hours every day at coffee shops, hanging out, drinking coffee. It was mm. and well. It was you and Tim do that here anyway. Exactly. It was so. I comfortable. walked my son in the stroller, and ev <laughs> like four mornings a week, they're sitting outside. Well, yeah. now it's right here in those chairs. Yep. During COVID, oh, yeah. we were outside, just, just hanging just out, just about every day. <laughs> yeah, Rain you or shine. Out here every day. Um, mm -hmm. And then last, well, I had a lovely dinner at Merriman's in Waimea. I have to give a shout out to them. Prime rib, amazing ceviche, and then one of the best desserts I've ever had hmm. was like this chocolate purse. And it was filo dough wrapped around this like melted, unbelievably delicious chocolate served with a scoop of vanilla ice cream. And it was just mm, so simple nice. and just mm. tits. I loved it. it I was so <laughs> happy with it. I just was beside myself. So Bravo Merriman's. I won't go. Th so anyway, that's, I won't talk about the, the other stuff we did, the death marches, the waterfall hike with no waterfall, and uh, yeah, the, right the waterfall hike there. that almost killed me, and <laughs> various things. But uh, I'm just picturing you and Tim like pulling each other up a running creek bed. No, Bill, Bill literally had to pull me up the one because I have short little legs. And <laughs> so you guys basically did like 
um, Bouldering. the Lord of the Rings, where Sam was trying to help Frodo Sam. up to. Yeah, I was. <laughs> Ew. I can't. I can go picture on. it in my head right now. We survived. We saw the we saw the waterfall and A waterfall. made it back. Yeah, we did. We saw the one waterfall. How about the twelve twelve hundred foot waterfall? Did you see that one? We did. We didn't even hear it. <laughs> yeah, we we go. saw pictures Thanks, online. Tim. God, I can't wait for Tim's comments. I we, this oh, video. My that dad guy. was stoked about that one. That that was uh, that was something else. <laughs> anyway, so <laughs> that's the Hawaii trip. But up, but um, go visit Big Island. It's nice and quiet and fun if you know where to go. Um, I can't say what the other islands are like, but I I know that it was like Waimea was like Newburgh, just like yeah. hmm. plopped in Hawaii, and but not on the beach. It was not on the beach where we were. We did go to the beach a couple times, but it was just a sleepy little town hmm. and did not you, insanely the, expensive. The important question, though, did you get wet? I went in the ocean, but I did not surf. We, we went there to work on Tim's house. That's right. <sighs> oh, see, you didn't tell any of us this. Stefan, for like two weeks, well, he told us they're going on the trip like three weeks before. Yeah. He's trying to get us all to come. He's like, it's cheap. Mm-hmm. Tim's going to put us up. There was mm-hmm. not a single word about, oh, we're here to work on Tim's house. <laughs> right. Well, you we're, didn't come anyway, so were you gonna, you. Were you going to tell us before we got there, or were we going to show up and then work on Tim's house? That was the plan. Yeah. Yeah. It didn't, didn't work. This is why I have trust issues. Yeah. Well, that's okay. Yeah, They're it. not my issues. Um, so anyway. <laughs> Me too. It was Me too. I recommend the big guy. Lots of stuff. Lots uh, more to see. Okay. Moving on. Um, ah, Sports Minute. Sports. 60 real, seconds, real quick. Yeah, sports minute. March Madness is happening. OSU and U of O, both and, in the tournament. And yeah. the women. And USC is in the as and, well. and the, Who cares about USC? Well, we're just saying three pack, Who cares about pack March teams. Madness? Not me. But anyway, go ahead. I mean, I actually kind of second that, but still. <laughs> um, and then the women on the women's side, Oregon's in? They're done. Oregon's done? Yeah. Oregon State's in. Oh, sorry. Oregon State's done. Oh, oh, so they got Although I should feel like I should check Twitter. Sorry, right Scott Rue. I know. Now I'm... Head coach at I'm Oregon State University. Wow, we are so life. on top of this. Wow. <laughs> I just want to say, I just realized I can, I can quote the name of a coach in the women's NCAA, which yep. is Scott Ruick at Oregon State, because my dad was his... Principal. Principal for a, a, a while. Yeah, he was a great guy. He was Super a great PE teacher. He, yeah, he coached yeah. at Fox, too. Yeah. He gave yeah. Megan her only C through all of high school. Good for you, Scott Rook. One C, <laughs> Megan. Um, she needed that to humble her a little bit because she's so goddamn smart. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. And and your dad also got her like out of PE <laughs> probably a little too much because she just wanted to sit in the back. Anyway. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So March Madness. So March Madness. Moving on. Moving Exciting. on. Uh, Portland had a trade at the deadline. Um, mm-hmm. We're welcoming. Um, was it Trent? Gone. Yeah. Gone. Yeah, but they got Norm, James Harden. We got Norm Powell. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. You shut your mouth. <laughs> uh, Norm Powell. We had to give up Gary Trent Jr. and Rodney Hood, two guys I love dearly. They've been great for the team. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure. But it'll Norm work out. Powell is uh, probably anyone who's shot now. more than 200 three pointers this year. He's number three in percentage. Mm. Oh, so that's with, that's a deep, deep statistic. That's that what I was just thinking. Important. But yeah. with Portland. Um, when they know that our, that our internal yeah. defense is garbage. We are giving up points in the paint at a historic rate. Like in the last decade, Portland's allowed more points in the paint than anyone. So what they're doing is they're playing the three-point game. That's why we're shooting 50-plus three-pointers a game. So to bring on another guy that can shoot threes really well works Sometimes with you just got to go with what you're Scott's, good at. They're playing money ball. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're playing money ball. I, 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 I get point. it. I get it. Uh, the Sixers did a trade, back. but it was mm-hmm. totally insignificant, so I won't even talk about it anymore. I really um, feel like it's George like, I, I had this thing about, uh, you know, you don't, like, let doors open for you. You walk up to the door, and you're like, hmm, is this door unlocked? And then you there push you it go. open, and I feel like that's what the Blazers are doing. Like, huh, I think so. Yeah, let's go. I think, like, what the hell? We could finish fifth in the division for the 19th year in a row. Or we can or try we to we do like something. And, and but the NBA is mm-hmm. so unusual this year in that there's literally, like, nine or ten teams in the West that are legit, not like nine or 10 teams that could win it all, but four or five that could win it all. Right. And nine or 10 that are like going to be really tough outs. And well, the Blazers are going to get are making things even more. I mean, injuries, the Lakers are, well, the shortened season right. is oh, causing be, way more injuries tough. when CJ and Nurk are back. CJ Nurk like, is coming back. And Dame he announced like, his comeback. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. And Dame is, he's just going to keep you in any series. Like almost any series is going to go seven with the Blazers. It just, it really is that way. He's so good. When he's we got so on, hard it was, to contain. It was tied in overtime with one second left and Dame was headed to the free throw line. So I just turned off my phone. Because he's going to win. Right. Deal. He's yeah. going to win yeah. it. He's All right. So and the fun. last thing on Sports Minute, I am playing fantasy baseball. What is that? Because 
a Facebook friend was like, hey, we need one more person. I've kind of been, like, I like baseball, and I follow the Phillies. Mm-hmm. Like, I follow the Phillies. And, but then I did, like, my draft or whatever, and I looked at my draft, and I'm like, fuck. I don't know who <laughs> three quarters of these guys are. Like, so also, this what is, is going to be a steep What is the curve. Phillies mascot? What is that blue tube-nosed thing? Uh, the Philly fanatic, the best mascot know, what in what is all it? of sports. What is it? He's a Philly fanatic. He's the He's fanatic. A fanatic. He's a fan. Is he? A, He's a Phil- how did yeah. they come up with that amalgamation of? Well, they took all the awesome in the world and put it into one being and created the Philly fanatic. Wow, nice. Except that the Fair. Philly fanatic's kind of. You want, me, you want to hear my Philly fanatic story? Yeah. The Reading Phillies, my hometown like baseball team back east. I went. I went to a game and I sat in like tit seat. They were so good. I'm using tits a lot today. Uh, we were right by the dugout, right by the dugout, and a foul ball went, whoom, like over a guy's shoulder and landed right in my seat. I got the foul ball. Wonderful, amazing moment. Whoa. The fanatic is there visiting, and he he's on top of the dugout and comes over to the edge and he goes, goes like this and he wants he wants my ball and I throw him the ball and he walks away and I'm like, what do I do? And he comes over and he says, come on, come on, and I go up on top of the dugout. I'm probably like seven. Six. Six. I'm little. And he puts out his hand for me to slap his hand. I've never done anything with a mascot before. Of course, when I go to, you know, hit it, he pulls it away. And so I jump him and I try to, like, get my ball back. (laughs) And he literally, so he literally hands it to me and goes, get out of here, kid. I could actually, the Philly fanatic actually talked to me and told me to go back to my seat. I feel like that's a Christmas story, but for Stefan. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He did. I do do love get out of here, kid. Mm -hmm. Little shit. That's an awesome story. Oh, man. Do you, I don't, some of you, have you met, you met T-Love? My buddy yeah. T Love, he was the I went to Lucky the Beaver or Lucky Lucky the Beaver for the Portland Beavers. Mm-hmm. He loved being a mascot because of the stuff he could get away with. Like he could just torture oh, people, and because he was a mascot, he could totally get he away. He like with lived it. his life as a mascot. He like, is kind of a he, mascot. He at Linfield, I mean, he was older than me, and I remember yeah, coming in. My, he was like a senior when I was a freshman, I think. And I remember just like, I mean. Not thinking that guy looks like a mascot, but when I think about it in the pet, and when I look back on it, it's like he was almost just like walking around campus, just like I'm this is man. such an awesome place. Yeah. Like, he was just so enthusiastic about Linfield itself. Oh yeah, oh um, T Love. Yeah, he's my uh, he's my guy. Oh, uh, he's yeah. wonderful. Yeah, he's a great guy. Love yeah. you, T Love. That ends sports minute. Yeah. West Coast wine update. Stefan has the TTV paperwork coming. And we've so, been trimming the on. shit out of our vineyard. <laughs> yeah. well, we'll get there. So we're working on the vineyard. We're working. Okay, uh, so we're, uh, we are, uh, we really got to get it done. We're like, literally, I talked to Chris at Berg, and he was like, you need to get that done the next week. We're like week, 10 week days away from bud break. Sunday. Yeah. Yeah, we need to get it done. We're done Sunday. Um, we've gotten, but on the positive note, we've gotten a lot done. We're over halfway done. Mm-hmm. A couple more good days up there, we might actually be able to get it done. And Casey, Super exciting. Uh, I mean, we're we're rookie farmers. This is our first oh. full season. Right. Like rookie even doesn't even do us. No, I'm not even a farmer. It doesn't yeah. do. I you didn't let me finish. Go doesn't even do us justice. Like no, you're right. You're we're right. just like stumbling through. I spend like six minutes with an individual vine trying to like. You had to be like so. Is so there this something? one has a, a shoot that's coming from the root system, and also has replanted itself from an old cane arm. Totally. And I would really like to get some fruit off this, but. It's not going to give me any regrowth canes. And mm-hmm. so, and, and that's like every single it. vine. Oh, oh On top gosh. of like so all the blackberries time. in the ground that we're constantly cutting out to uh-huh. just that's, maintain yeah. for like three weeks because yeah. they'll be back. Right. But we have to keep telling ourselves that like the reason it's taking so long is A, well, of course we suck, but B, the vineyard has been neglected and it was not for years. So like yeah, you're renovating. Right. Theoretically, and we really care. Like we're trying to do this well. Theoretically, next mm-hmm. year it should go a lot faster for totally. both of those reasons. It should be totally. in better shape. So I don't anyway. know. I, I do a lot of fruit fruit pruning and I just love how when you get into it, you don't even have to think anymore. Mm. You're just like cut, 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 cut. No. And you can then identify. <laughs> right. I wish. Yeah. Wait, I wish. what is that? We're excited for I that know, time. right? This is foreign to us. Oh, God. I, don't, I uh, stopped uh, Katie made a video of us uh, harvesting for um, the Newbury Public Library for like one of the kids uh, things and I'd never really watched myself harvest before and I was like damn that guy knows what he's doing (laughs) (laughs) it's like a calculus equation every time I sit in front of a vine I'm like do I use the loppers or the pruners in my back pocket like Mm -hmm. that's first second like Mm -hmm. 
Why is there 12 uh, years of old wood on this vine? Like, there's like, oh there, every vine we look at, there is literally, it seems like it's all or there's nothing. a year old. Or, or there's, there's nothing. nothing. And or it's, it's just like, little, you were working on the good section yeah. where it was vigorous. Where we were, the long rows, and it's just like, pew. You're like, all right, we're leaving <laughs> two like, regrowth. Oh, and that's all that we're getting at. You're just, four, four, just, four, oftentimes Whoa. where we're at, there's just, the plant has been neglected so much that it's like, it can't feed any more kids. Yeah. So it's kind of like done, it's done. And so there's like a bunch of old wood that's, you can clearly tell is not going to be good with this year. Yeah. And there's just a couple shoots coming out the bottom that are like suckers. Right. But there's not anything that we can look at and be like, okay, perfect. This will be a great, like this year's, know. you know, we're, we're, fruit. We're, yeah. After this year, we're going to be able to start fresh. But, but that's really. it. Like, that's right. it. It's like, we're, okay, it's a long we're, gonna, we're reloading, put our head we're unloading down. those plants to allow them to do that. And then we're going to yeah. come back next year, you're right, and just be like, oh, thank God. There's like six to choose from here. So you know? um, floor management, what are you doing? <laughs> right. Walking on it. What is that? Walking on it. <laughs> um, we're we're yeah. just leaving God to... There's not going to be any tilling. We believe in organic you know. floor management. So, <laughs> yeah. And that means, Casey, we don't put anything on it. We believe that, we believe that the real the real work is done. <laughs> we're is hoping we're going to get under the a grass. spray yeah. schedule. Yeah. yeah. I mean, these vines were planted in 87. Okay. That late? Is that correct? I thought it was earlier. A little earlier? 86? I don't know. They were clippings off David Lett's original south block. So yeah. this is these are the children of the first vineyard in Oregon. Mm-hmm. They're old. They're really well-established roots. Part of it's the, uh, most, it's all own rooted, so part of it's phylloxerated. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. And then the woman who's been farming it has been using the very same farming practice and technique that her mentors told her about in the mid 80s. Got it. Yeah. So, so floor management work, hasn't been a part of our program. It's, it's <laughs> not. <laughs> right. Honestly, I'm just <laughs> so impressed by how <laughs> things have changed since I was a kid. Huh. You know, like one of my clear memories of, um, like driving towards what is now the regional landfill, <laughs> like coming from the coast, right, and heading to McMinnville, is just seeing uh, what is now Yamhill Valley Vineyards yep. um, planted originally on a bare hillside, and then nothing happened to it except for rainfall over the winter. And I remember as a kid just seeing the mud and the channels mm. coming down through that because mm. it was bare dirt, right? Yep. Yeah, and now new. I look at vineyards and I'm like, Damn. Now they know. It's like, Dialed it's in. amazing. Yeah. yeah. Just yeah, yeah. incredible, Smart the people. difference, right? Smarter than us. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Quickly, a uh, break for to pimp the wine. wine. Patricia Green, Volcanic, mm-hmm. uh, Pinot Noir 2018. Very, very tasty. And this one was really reasonably priced. I want to say 30, 28, something like that. It was really, really nice wine. So anyway, good job, guys, out there. Type in hospitality on their website, and you won't get a discount. But <laughs> you, we would appreciate it. We'd appreciate the heads up. Nothing. Yeah. Let them know you, you heard from us. No. <laughs> exactly. Um, okay, and let's move on. What's beautiful and what's brutal? I'm getting a shot in the arm tomorrow morning. Woo! Me too. Get that thing sucked. Yep. Shot. Yep. Warmed up. Yep. Shot through the arm. You're Thank too God. Late. I'm ready to start hugging people again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think, uh, what are we going to do? Color code our hats? Like, if you've got it and you're huggable. Scarlet letters. Yeah, you've got like a, a v. I mean, you people get are v? getting the, the, the vaccine tattoo, which is like the two Band-Aids come together. Oh, the v. <laughs> I won't Jesus be doing Christ. that. Oh, okay. But, um, I mean, they, there was too much shaving that needs to happen for me to have that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just imagine someday I'm older and have nice hairy arms. My neck doesn't have that much hair. On it. I think <laughs> I get it right here. That's actually a good idea, Casey. Yep. I had dinner oh. over at my parents' house the other night. No maskless. It was lovely. Wow. Just because they're fully vaccinated, fully, fully, fully. And it was just, uh, it was like a breath of fresh air, mm-hmm. so to speak. Yeah, yeah I took care of my bro- uh, my dad, or I helped take care of my dad um, when he had like a major surgery this summer. And it, it like sucked because none of our family, the rest of us could like hang out with him. And we were like both in masks and sort of like keep us both clean and healthy. Um, and so that was like my interactions with him. Gosh. So I'm super excited. Yeah. And now, you're almost you're almost two weeks out of your last shot or two weeks? Yeah, yeah. I got the Johnson Johnson. So Oh, you're a one shot. Yeah. Nice, baby. Bam. Now our county, yeah. what what was the official count last week? Was it like under 40 cases for the week? It was 50 cases okay. for two weeks. Okay. Hell yeah. yeah. Nice. Which I was about to say, like, I've actually transitioned in my brain from how many cases to how many doses. Okay, now yeah. this is something you right? can like, actually... I just realized that's, that's how I... This is an important uh, designation. We just mo- we're moving into low... 
um, as of today risk, or tomorrow. No risk. Tomorrow, to okay. lower risk. Yeah. But and that's like um, what fifty percent capacity indoors, mm-hmm. uh, up to three hundred people outdoors or yeah. something like that. But we're going to be staying probably in low risk until fall winter yeah. who knows you like, know i had somebody ask me on facebook what's lower than lower which i thought was a great question yeah, no. <laughs> right right and my only on it like the honest answer i had was i'm well i'm assuming that the governor is working on that right and and if if she's not i better get on it yeah right? like what's the right. benchmark yeah june is when we have our testing our testing sites up for it ohsu so that's a good that's a good parameter it's like the, we're closing testing sites down now Essentially, everything's turning to vaccines. Mm-hmm. All the all the manpower, all the space is turning yeah. to vaccines mm-hmm. now. That makes sense. So, we're in, we're in the, so our numbers are down because nobody's getting tested. Obviously, <laughs> yeah. Fuck. That was Trump's <laughs> advice from the start, guys. <laughs> oh, That's yeah. right. right. Testing Too sites are tests. testing sites are really low, which testing's is a good thing. The problem. But you're seeing a change from 500 people a day to 50 people a day at the testing sites. Mm-hmm. 400 to 550 in some cases, but. A dramatic change in people feeling like they're sick or being exposed. So that yeah. means it's we're beating this thing. That's, yeah, that's and we're still having, at least in Yamhill County, you know, like our positivity rate's still going down. Good. I mean, it's like we're at like three point two now. Yeah. Um. So it's a really good sign, right? Like if it's if there's only fifty people getting tested, but all of them are get, are positive, you know. But that's not true. Like we're right. st- we're still keeping it just like a tiny fraction. Yeah. Yeah, Very percentage exciting. of positive cases is still as low as it has been mm-hmm. the entire time. It's just now down to 50 people getting tested instead of 450 people getting tested a day. Right. <clears throat> okay. And this week we got 4,700 doses in the Yamhill County, um, and we're expecting uh, as many as 10,000 doses by next week. Oh, so I'll have the email Christ when Jesus. I go home. Awesome. Yes. Let's see how many we have. Yeah. That's awesome. Exciting. Yeah. Uh, another beautiful I'd like to share. Mm-hmm. Go to my Facebook page, but I have been, I, I bought a parts car. For my BMW. That you didn't tell your wife about? That I didn't tell my wife about. This was a mistake, I fully admit. And then, uh, but obviously everything is fine. Well, I did have to we'll post uh, pay their, a little penance. We'll post our conversation pay right after penance? she found out. I did, uh, I did meals for the whole Instagram. time I was gone in Hawaii. <laughs> That's like a, baby, I'm so sorry. Why did I do that? Yeah, yeah, so I did a little penance. But we have a parts car. And Aiden and I have been pulling the parts from the parts car and making plans for fixing up the E38 that we have. It's been a lot of fun. Aiden has gotten more into cars, and I've always been into cars. And it's like bonding with your kids on a specific thing is is really cool. And I didn't until this. Honestly, I didn't have that specific thing. Mm. Like probably with. Any of my kids, that there was like that one thing that was like really like we always talk about Harry Potter and kind of our family things, mm-hmm. but this is like the thing I have with Aiden that everybody else can't stand to talk about, yeah. and it's been wonderful. Super cool. That's really, really special. It. It's been yeah. special. I'm excited to find those things with Malcolm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's it. Yeah, you're you're gonna love it. You're gonna love it. So anyway, that's been a wonderful Super cool. development. Not oh. that I know how to fix cars. I know how to pull trim parts off, mostly without breaking them. But hey, it's a, pro- it's a process. <laughs> you gotta be a fool before you're a genius. Hey, and I'm gonna make out okay. We got beautiful new wheels. Anyway, I'll stop, no one cares. Okay, Brutal. Um, Over, lad. Uh, as a tour provider, mm-hmm. booking reservations yep. Yep. for yep. large groups mm-hmm. has been a motherfucker. Uh, because people people don't understand nope. the the regulations. They understand the percentage. Like, oh, p- places are open. They can take fifty percent. Blah blah blah. But they're not looking at the how many people. Um, right. Because it's it's mm-hmm. it's all over the place. Some wineries are only taking four or less, and other wineries right. will take twelve um, because they kind of they want two, either they want the business or, top tables. or they'll do two six tops, and they're mm-hmm. kind of like, hey, we'll make mm-hmm. it work. But those are few and far between. And so if you're a group, if you have that bachelorette or that birthday or that group that you've been, you know, you didn't travel last year, you're not going to Italy this year or whatever, and you've got that group of 8 and up, 8 to 12, 14, whatever, it's going to be tough sledding. You're not going to get into the places mm-hmm. you want to get into. Right. You're just, because some places are just slamming the door. Right. Right. They're just like, no. And if mm-hmm. you try to book as two separate groups and then try and like interact, we will shut you down and kick you out. 
Like they're not fucking around. Yep. And they have I, enough stuff to worry about now. You know? I, I get it. I understand right why wineries <clears throat> are being drawing a hard line. It just mm-hmm. for me as a tour provider fucking sucks. It's like really it's hard. difficult. Hard. Yeah. It's adding a lot, a lot more work to to all these large groups. Yep. So. I mean, large groups, as somebody who's worked and managed winery, like winery tasting tasting rooms, large groups are never your favorite group. They're, they're, yes. way, more, they're way more work. They yeah. never buy a lot of wine. They tend to be full of people who don't know, have any interest in the brand that they're at. So, like, if you're with a large group, you need to have a couple people who are sort of like the representatives. This is, a, you know, just advice for me, but who kind of like we're going to buy some wine we're going to like keep our you know keep our group under control because they're like this That's some 22 year old mm-hmm. college student doesn't want to have to manage a group of adults who are completely drunk right. and it's intimidating yep. and like yep. so i mean wesley's currently yeah. works at a winery i mean he can speak on it just as much but i just oh, think right. large groups you got to be you identify you, somebody who's essentially like the contact yeah right? like yeah, we got to negotiate like, this like yeah. hey i know large like groups I'm the suck, adult. but mm-hmm. you can you do. You definitely want to. You don't want to be the group that goes in and ruins everyone else's time. And, at that and these large groups, they don't get it. No, They're, they no. don't get it. They're like, what? They don't want our business. They don't want us there. No, they no. Don't. a lot of wineries <laughs> literally do not no. want you there when you're a large group. Yeah, please. Because one large back, group can screw like, up the wife. experience of eight other two top tables yeah. Yeah. that are big buyers. They're the collectors. They're the and obviously, like as a tour provider, mm-hmm. I love large group business. But this yes. is a conversation we have to have all the time. It's like, look, you have to be a good mm-hmm. steward of the places I'm going to take you to. These places are too right? small um, and, to handle and then also like craziness. We're, mm-hmm. I'll put you on the books, but come June, if the, if the numbers, numbers haven't lifted, we're either talking about two separate SUVs going to two different places. I'll take you to the same wineries, but they're not going to be at the same time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, the pushback with that has been mm. difficult to deal with, but... Yeah. At the same time, like as a tour provider, it's my responsibility too to maintain the relationships with the wineries oh, that are yeah. accepting my guests over and over again. Oh, and because so, those wineries that yeah. do a great job with groups, you better believe I bring people back there who are sm- you know smaller groups, right. buyers. I remember those staff right. members, especially that you know do an excellent job. Right. Like I got mm-hmm. you on the back end, like yeah. you know. But you know, but yeah, to a winery, <laughs> they don't it. care. You're a big group. I mean. It's not like you going to uh, ringside and having twelve guests who are all going to spend a hundred bucks per. Usually, in a, in a big group, you have a couple people buy a couple of bottles, and then everyone else just pays their tasting pays their fees. Tastings. Yep. In a winery, you make your most money off of like a couple of couples that come in that week. Right. Mm-hmm. So you're going to look for those clients, and you're going to focus on them. And with a huge group, that takes away your focus from really providing the service that you want yeah. to make money. And so, yeah, I, really I would like to see stuff. more wineries say like okay if you're over x amount of people over eight people or whatever we'll we would love to take you but we'll we will do bottle service i agree with that you right. know we so, won't do right. we won't do the full tasting yeah right you can buy the bottles drink the bottles you can have the space for an hour and a half and let us know if you need more wine or whatever mm-hmm. but um and just not do the tastings there's not a lot there's wineries willing to do bottle service but they don't typically offer it for larger right. groups and i think yeah. it should be a little bit That's more point, standard. Yeah. well it's tough too because oftentimes i find in large groups there is it's the couple that planned the tour mm-hmm. or it's it's the one person who has the club membership yeah. that yep. is really invested in the tasting totally and you want like you, you go to interact with them but yeah. then their asshole of a friend from college is like hey what's a tannin you know and not asking genuinely like they're just yeah. trying to be they learn the word at the last winery and think it's funny oh or, it becomes the joke of the day or, or you know like, you, you ex- gave me a really short pour it's like you, you're fucking tasting not drinking yeah the guy that the guy that oh snaps <clears> him. I can't have that. <laughs> but it's like i like i really do have empathy and compassion for the person that brought their friends out and you can see the look in their eye like yep. my friends are absolutely destroying this for me for the people that I thought yeah, would enjoy it. The club totally. Member. And so it's, I feel for them. I get yeah. stuff. So yeah. anyway, that can be brutal. So I feel for you wineries, but also help. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. So we just yeah. need like a giant green space where a couple of wineries come just to do bottle service. I think over the last week, probably 75% of my inquiries have been for six or more. 
Oh, which is that unusual. Is tough. That's unusual. I mean, I think the summer is going to be real rough. It's wild. <laughs> it is going to be a tough summer, man. Yeah. Buckle up. Busy. I, I like have a call I need to make with uh, you know one of our neighbors who has, has a wedding venue because he's like, you know, it's gonna, it's going to be intense. Get ready. Yeah. You can just like be like between two fathers of the bride. Like I'm starting at 30k. <laughs> You yeah. guys can just like that go is back the and advice forth. I will give him. Yeah, he's like <laughs> July fifteenth. Like this is a great date, like prime summer. But I'm starting at thirty k, so you guys can go up from here. You know? It's a big really? one. Take it or leave it. I, I know you have it. no other options. Hey yeah. man, that's my advice. But I don't. Know I mean, I but now those that. county roads are open. You can just grab a bunch of folding chairs and go up there and do a wedding, right? <laughs> <That's> right. <laughs> Public land weddings. Hell yeah. yeah. What could be better? I got no problem. Oh. I'll just charge I mean, uh, 10K in, for a wedding in the trash if you guys want to book me. There right. you'll do all the photography. Photography and all like. You guys can just sit in the ground. Though. And I'm then you can do target there. shooting afterwards. It's great. <laughs> yeah, perfect. <laughs> that might be actually perfect. Oh, yeah. What could be You better? drink all the wine and then you shoot the bottle. Yeah. Oh. All right. Wow. Good idea. No. Well, I feel like we need a lawyer after that last yeah. couple of sentences. Well, but, you uh, drink, you do, yeah. The the views expressed in this do not necessarily represent anyone. Anyway. Retweets yeah, are not my opinions or hospitality <laughs> or West Coast. I'll just dub it over after. Yeah, we, we all have masks on. So. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Uh, all right, all right, Casey, thank you for being with us. It was yeah, great joining you. Thanks. All right, if you enjoyed the episode, please like, follow, share, subscribe, and yes, we sir. will see you next week. Cheers. <laughs>